Hey guys, this is Nikhil from RLCEducation.com and in this video we will discuss about the solutions, the detailed solutions of uh, the AP Transco 2019 which was conducted 2-3 days ago. And when you talk about the difficulty of the exam, the, because this is the thing that is coming in minds of very, all the students, they are asking, sir what do you comment about the difficulty level of the examination paper? So I say this examination is not too difficult and some people are telling that it is shocking everybody. There is nothing much shocking in this uh, paper. It is quite easy paper. But the only fact is that it is a lengthy paper. You require to apply more mind and you require to apply more time basically to solve this particular paper. So if at least a half an hour or 45 minutes more would have been given for the time of examination definitely every student would feel easy and very comfortable in this paper and this kind of negative comments would not have come there is nothing uh, except it so when you talk about the cutoff so people are asking even about the cutoff so regarding cutoff what i can say is as far as my guess i don't say this is the exact cutoff it may be somewhere approximately just uh, it's uh, i'm not declaring that it is going to be the perfect one so if student is a non-local basically for a non-local guys, the cutoff may be around 75 plus and uh, for local people, it is around 70 plus. So that will be regarding the cutoff for this particular uh, examination. And uh, if as I was telling you, if the paper would have been given uh, 30 minutes or 45 minutes extra, this cutoff would have easily jumped by some 10 to 12 marks more. Because if at least half an hour were given, each student would be able to solve at least 10 to 12 questions more. So on that basis, I am telling. And when you ask about uh, category wise in local, I can't say about category wise. This is just my rough idea. So I don't claim this is 100% accurate. But as far as I have in interacted with the students so far, this is the possible cutoff. So without much delay, I will try to solve all the questions, most of the questions as possible. So my reference set is B because the question paper with me is B set and uh, the first question in B set when uh, you are having A set or C set, D set, these are the question numbers. So 1 in B, 17, 55, 31 are the question numbers and this question says that there is a quartz crystal, high Q quartz crystal exhibits series resonance and uh, parallel resonance at some frequencies as he was telling that. So the frequency at which uh, series resonance is occurring is omega s and the frequency at parallel resonance is occurring is <coughs> omega p. So the answer for this is option d which says that parallel resonance is greater than omega s and both of them are very close. Very close. So which is option d. So before going uh, into next question I just want to make one thing clear about this video. I am going to give detailed solution not just solution and whatever is the answer like that. If somebody is just looking for solution and key you can fast forward this video and uh, watch in a faster way. But who, who is in of this thought that is they want to know in depth about each question and they want to rectify their mistakes so that upcoming EPDCL or SPDCL exam they won't go wrong. Because based on this experience maybe some of you have a correct some of you might be doing mistake. So what you have to do is for each question where you went wrong, go in depth into that concept. Maybe you might get another related question, not exactly the same question, something related or the concept might be something relevant to you. So in that way, if you are uh, planning to study, then this video is correct. You watch normally complete duration. So the question is about resonance in a crystal. So how, why do you want to use a quartz crystal? under resonance condition so basically crystal is used as a oscillator is used in an oscillator something called as a crystal oscillator why do you use an oscillator to produce waveforms basically it's a waveform generating circuit so how does a crystal oscillator look like so crystal oscillator is nothing but you will have a crystal like this but when you want to analyze a crystal's behavior in electrical terms you need to draw an equivalent circuit of the crystal isn't it because you will be applying voltage across the crystal then the crystal starts generating some vibrations that is the principle of crystal so when you convert this into an electrical equivalent circuit that electrical equivalent circuit of the crystal will consist of a r l c and there will be some parallel capacitance also like this so this is the electrical equivalent of a 
capacitor. So R, L, C are the series values of resistor inductance and capacitance and CM is called as parallel capacitance which is present between mounting. So it is also called as mounting capacitances. That means the capacitance present between the both terminals. So that is CM. Now when this crystal has to oscillate, when do you get an oscillatory oscillation in the system? Whenever you get resonance that is called as an oscillatory system. So when you want to create resonance, there are two conditions of creating resonance for this oscillator. One is with respect to the series RLC circuit, you will get a series resonance. With respect to parallel CM, you will be getting a parallel resonance. So under series and parallel resonance, the impedance of the circuit will be varying, isn't it? So tell me in which resonance you will be getting minimum impedance? You will be getting minimum impedance in series resonance. You will get maximum impedance in a parallel resonance. So if you are supposed to draw the impedance versus frequency curve for a crystal oscillator, then you will get something like this. This is the impedance and this is the omega which is frequency. Then if you draw the curve, the curve will look like this, something like this. That means at one point of time while you are increasing the frequency, you will be getting minimum value of impedance. So what will be that frequency? Series resonant frequency. And where you are getting the maximum value of frequency that is called as parallel. But the gap between the series and parallel is not much high. It is very very closer. So I can say parallel resonant frequency is higher than the series resonant frequency and they are close to each other. When you talk about the value of that resonance that will be equal to 1 by under root L into series CE that will be the series resonant frequency. Next will be the parallel resonant frequency. Parallel resonant frequency is 1 plus CSC by CM by LCSC. Another important thing is in construction of oscillators crystals are used as a feedback element feedback element okay in an oscillator crystal is a feedback element so depending upon what is a feedback element only your type of oscillator will be varying if it is a crystal oscillator then the feedback element is a crystal understood so for an oscillator what is the type of feedback that we require that is the next thing so you will get an oscillation when do you get oscillation when the feedback is a positive feedback okay you will get positive feedback and to get maximum positive feedback which resonance sir in which resonance should we operate a crystal so to get maximum positive feedback you should operate that particular crystal in a series resonance okay under series resonance you will be getting maximum positive feedback so now you see by just this small uh, small very small question how many things you have learned now you got to know now what is the electrical equivalent circuit of a crystal. So tomorrow he may ask you what does the electrical equivalent circuit of a crystal will consist of. These things will be the electrical equivalent circuit of the crystal. And again what will be the value of series resonant frequency or parallel resonant frequency. Just formalize enough like this. And another thing is how the impedance of the crystal will be varying when you are varying the frequency at the series resonant and parallel frequency. Next thing that you might have learned is in a feedback what kind of uh, feedback for an oscillator what kind of feedback is used. Positive feedback is used. How do you name oscillator based on the feedback element. If the feedback element is a crystal it is a crystal oscillator. And in a crystal oscillator you are having two resonant frequencies omega s and omega p where you are getting maximum positive feedback at a series resonant frequency you are getting maximum positive feedback. The reason is the impedance of the circuit is minimum at series resonance. If the impedance is minimum, the value of feedback voltage, what you are feeding back from the output to the input will be maximum, obviously. If the impedance of the uh, parallel, I mean, the feedback circuit is more, how will the output will be conveyed to the input efficiently? No. So definitely that is the case. Okay. Next is question number two, which is 18 in A, 47 in C, 32 in D. Now here he says that the present output Qn of a edge triggered JK flip flop is logic 0. If J is equal to 1 then Q n plus 1 is. So let us draw the truth table for a JK flip flop. So JK flip flop will have two inputs J and K. It will have two outputs that is Q n plus 1 and Q bar n plus 1. Understood? Where before that you can also write Qn and Qn plus 1. Qn and sorry Qn and Qn bar. So where Qn and Qn bar are the present inputs. Present inputs. And Qn plus 1 and Qn plus 1. Q bar n plus 1 are the 
outputs after application of the input signal j and k understood so if we draw the write the truth table you have 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 so these are the possible inputs for a jk flip flop so in a jk flip flop is same as sr latch or sr flip flop j is nothing but simply set k is nothing but like reset only that means here he says that when the jk flip flop j is 1 j is 1 means this j is 1 this case is talking about sir why did you take this case only why not this case because he did not mention k so obviously k should be 0 only if k input is not given means what it is 0 so if 1 and 0 is given that means you are setting the flip flop when you are setting the flip flop what will be the qn i mean the output will be 1 and qn qn plus 1 bar will be 0 understood so this is going to be your present output okay the present output that means after application of signal this became your present output and the output of this particular element depends upon the present inputs but not the past conditions it does not depend upon the past conditions but when do we when does it depend on past conditions sir when does it depend on past condition when you are going to give j and k equal to 1 1 then that condition is called as Tugul condition so when your input is going to be 1 and 1 when you are getting what 1 and 1 what is this called as Tugul this is called as Tugul condition under Tugul condition when you are going to give 1 and 1 as inputs your outputs are going to be same as the previous outputs so that will be Qn and Qn bar that is called as Tugul condition and another thing to be uh, noted over here is he said that what is the type of triggering here here he says that it is edge triggering edge triggered so if there is edge triggered jk flip flop 1 plus 1 i mean when j is equal to 1 and k is equal to 1 is called as Tugul condition in Tugul, what you will get in Tugul, you will get the present inputs same as the past inputs i mean the present output will be same as the past output but if he says that it is a level triggered if it is a level triggered jk flip flop then if j and k equal to 1 that condition is called as race around condition race around condition means your output will be toggling or i can say it will be oscillating 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 so that is called as j race race around condition that means when you are telling these flip flop to both set and reset what does it mean what is the meaning let us say you are uh, let us say you are working in your office your boss is telling today is leave and today is not leave so what do you will do nothing that you can do isn't it that is only called as race around condition but if you are edge triggering that particular jk flip flop then it will understand that you have to do what you have done uh, last day so i mean the past input will be the present input that is for level triggered this is for level triggered you will have race around for edge triggered this is the condition two goal condition understood so the answer here is option d option d is the answer so output qn will be qn plus one will be one logic next is question number three in b and 1948 and 24 in acd respectively here he says that minimum number of two to one multiplexer are realized to realize to create a 8 to 1 multiplexer that means you want to con create a multiplexer which is 8 by 1 using 2 by 1 understood so there is a direct formula if you want to create a multiplexer okay if you want to create a multiplexer of some order using 2 by 1 and that order is let us say 2 power n into 1 what is that 2 power n into 1 you want to create this 2 power n into 1 multiplexer by using 2 by 1 multiplexer then number of 2 by 1 required is given directly by the formula 2n minus 1 it is given by 2n minus 1 so if 2 power n by 1 is what we have to construct what is the 2 power n minus 1 that is nothing but 8 into 1 this can also be written as 2 power 3 into 1 sir what is this 3 correspond to 3 corresponds to the selection lines there will be some selection lines called S1, S, S0, S1 and S2. Based on the number of selection lines, we will design how many inputs are possible. That's it. So you want to create this 8 by 1 by using 2 by 1. Then how many you require? 2 power n minus 1. That is 8 minus 1. That will be equal to 7. So anyhow, we are talking about max. There is another important thing about MUX multiplexer. That is MUX is also called as universal logic gate 
it can be used as a universal logic gate that means you can implement any function by using mux so next is third question fourth question in set b which is 20 49 and 25 respectively in acd sets now he says that you are you have to execute a command or a program sub b in a 8085 microprocessor when you are using this code or this command subb this instruction this instruction directly means that you are supposed to do a minus b what you are supposed to do a minus b that means you have to subtract the co contents of accumulator with what is given in register b so what then he is asking you what are the status of carry flag and sign flag so when you are performing any arithmetic operation definitely the flag register gets affected simultaneously carry flag and sign flag which are the parts of carry register flag register also gets affected and how, when will the carry flag will be affected and sign flag will be affected after performing subtraction so when your subtraction involves any borrow if you are getting any borrow in the final then carry flag will be equal to one and after subtracting you are getting some value in some de hexadecimal or i can say in binary if the msb that means the left corner bit is one then sign flag will be set to one because if that is one means that means it is a negative number isn't it so let us try to do what is given in the question so he says that here you are to do a minus b that means a minus b sh you should do and he says that a value of a is 3 a h and value of b is 49 h so you can convert this hexadecimal numbers into their equivalent binary numbers by using this 8421 code from this i can write 3 can be written as 0 0 1 1 and a can be written as 10 a is equal to 10 in the hexadecimal isn't it so that will be equal to 1010 this will be the binary equivalent for 4 also it will be 0100 and uh, for 9 it will be 1001 so you have to subtract before that you should be conversant with the subtraction rules in binary suppose you want to subtract 1 minus 1 that will be 0 understood 1 minus 0 1 only 0 minus 0 0 only but this is the special case 0 minus 1 comes into the picture then if 0 you are subtracting from 1 result will be 1 and in the next bit a borrow will be generated with a borrow okay so let us try to do that 0 minus 1 0 minus 1 means you are you are borrowing 1 from this bit and this become this bit becomes 1 and the result will be 1 here and you have borrowed this 1 so this will become 0 0 minus 0 is 0 1 minus 1 is 0 and 1 minus 0 is 1 1 minus 0 is 1 again you see over here 0 minus 1 and again that means you have to borrow from this side that means this will become 1 and again 0 minus 0 and already you are borrowing so this can also be this cannot also be 0 so this will also will be equal to 1 and there will be one borrow generated over here that means what is the result you are getting you are getting when you convert this into hexadecimal this will become f and this will be equal to 1 and you got 1 as borrow when you got 1 as borrow carry flag will be set to 1 sign flag will be set to 1 and the answer is f1 and the answer will be option a option a gives you the right answer so anyhow we started discussing about the status of flag i want to ex explain little bit about flag register in 8085 because registers are very very important thing especially flag register based questions are very important for our examinations and i hope you have seen my rocket revision videos also wherein i have very detailedly explained about 8085 and i have taken like this examples of different programs and how the status of flags are affected so before that what we have to do is we will just look at the register structure of 8085 so the register structure of 8085 looks something like this it will be having the register structure looks something like this so in this register structure the length of each partition is 8 bit this is how much 8 bits because this is an 8 bit microprocessor 8085 is how many bit microprocessor 8 bit microprocessor 8 bit indicates it indicates the data size size of the data it can handle that means each memory cell or each memory element has a data size of how much 8 bit only so like that there are this many number of 8 bit registers and as you can directly see these two registers what is the length from here to here if this both are 8 bit and 8 bit 
these two registers which is program counter and stack pointer are 16 bit and 16 bit a is accumulator f is called as flag register now our discussion is about flag register now tell me what is the size of flag register flag register size is 8 bit this is very very important question 8 bit means what it will have 8 cells like this for each bit one bit can be either 0 or 1 so this is the 8 cells let us say this is d0 d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 d6 d7 so these are the 8 cells or i can say 8 bits so when you see these 8 cells or these 8 bits what you will be having in each bit or which element will be stored means so this is the structure of flag register in 8085 processor and this d1 and d5 and d3 are unused bits so cy represents carry flag py represents parity flag ac represents auxiliary carry z is zeros flag and s is sign flag in our question he was asking about the status of which flags he was asking about the status of carry flag and sign flag as you know sign flag will be set whenever the msb is one and msb is not one then it will be reset or i can say it will be zero carry flag will be one when carry is generated when you are performing addition subs addition operation that is add or sub when you are doing subtraction if there is borrow generator or carry generated in addition operation then carry flag will be set to one and in, again regarding parity flag parity flag will be counting the number of ones number of ones in a particular result if the result consists of odd number of ones okay if the result consists of first let us say even number of ones then the parity flag will be equal to one if the result consists of odd number of ones then parity flag will be equal to zero now in the previous operation what did we get the result we got four ones and three zeros and another one now you tell me we say we said that carry flag will be set to one and uh, sign flag will be set to one can you comment about other flags also and what will be the parity flag equal to under the same operation parity flag will be set when even number of ones are there now here four ones and one one five ones are there so odd number of ones means parity flag will be zero so parity flag would have been zero for that question and again next is called as auxiliary carry flag auxiliary carry flag will arise when you are adding to 8 bit numbers 8 bit numbers means 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 so this is an 8 bit numbers isn't it so when you are adding two 8 bit numbers like this so these are two 8 bit numbers suppose while adding 1 plus 1 you are getting one and another carry here so when you are generating carry from lower 4 bits to the upper 4 bits that because 8 bit is a combination of two nibbles one nibble is 4 bits isn't it so 4 bit 4 bit and from lower 4 bit you are getting a carry from upper upper 4 bit then uh, auxiliary carry flag will be set to 1 and next 0 flag 0 flag will be set to 1 if all the all the result or total result consists of zeros only so here what will be the 0 flag 0 flag will be 0 why because the result is not completely zeros there are some ones also so like that you can uh, look out uh, look about the effect of flags next is question number 5 which is 2150 and 26 in other sets respectively he is asking about different types of relays for different uh, equipment so i'll directly write down the answer the first one is buchholz relay and it is very famous that buchholz relay is used for transformer and next one is called as a translay relay so translay relay is a special case of differential protection in differential protection what did we have differential protection is used for internal protection of any important equipment you will have cts on both sides of that equipment to be protected and there will be a relay coil which will be constantly comparing the current difference between the both currents so differential protection or differential relay is called as current differential relay translay relay is just opposite or just opposite not instead of current you will be monitoring the voltage so it is also called as voltage differential relays and translay, translay relay in fact is primarily useful in radial distributions in distribution lines it is primarily very much important but as per the observation of different other options also here we can say translay relay can be used for feeder protection it can be used for feeder protection yes it can be used for feeder protection but most apt is using in distribution systems next one is carrier current phase comparison relay so current and phase comparison relays are very very important in long transmission lines of course it is very important in long transmission lines because 
generally uh, when you talk about transmission lines which are part of grid let us say 400 kV transmission lines 6, 765 kV transmission lines or the lines which are uh, tie lines which are interlinking two grids for such grids current and phasor measurement units are very very important because when you are having current and phasor measurement then you can determine when the circuit breaker or that uh, protection system should act whether on overload or short circuit current so because having a combination of current and phasor measurement units you can differentiate between temporary overload and short circuit and thereby you can prevent fault or false tripping or mal operation of production systems especially in case of long transmission line so that is absolutely correct next one is called as directional over current relay so directional over current relay directly we can say it is used for ring main distribution so ring main means what one feeder will be fed from different substations so when you look at the ring system if there is a fault in one feeder there is a chance that there may be back flow or reverse flow of power so just like you have seen in parallel uh, parallel uh, feeder systems generally you will look at the example of uh, directional relay in parallel feeder system same will be applicable for ring main also because ring main is also a bigger parallel collected system connected system so there is a chance of a reversal of power during the occurrence of fault at any one bus or feeder next is called as the negative sequence relay so negative sequence relay is absolutely it is a very common question and a popular question is generator so in generator you will require negative sequence relay so in the next question he is asking you that a transmission line is having some self impedance of 0 0.8 per unit and mutual impedance zm of how much 0 0.2 per unit he is asking you to find out what is z1 z2 z0 positive negative sequence and zero sequence impedances the formula is quite direct that is for a transmission lines if you want to find out z1 and z2 you have to keep in mind that both of them will be equal and that will be equal to ZS minus ZM self impedance minus mutual impedance sir where do we find this self impedance and mutual impedance let us say this is a three phase transmission line every line will have some impedance in its phase in series that is called as ZS or this self impedance and there will be some mutual impedance from phase to phase from line to line that is called as mutual impedance that is because of the mutual inductance phenomena so between lines to line you will be having some impedance called as ZM so when you want to find Z1 and Z2 ZS minus ZM will be the formula and you are supposed to find Z0 that will be equal to ZS plus 2 ZM that will be the value of Z0 that is zero sequence impedance so if you look at the values then it will be 0 0.8 minus 0 0.2 that will be equal to 0 0.6 per unit and this will be equal to 0 0.8 plus 0 0.4 that is 1.2 per unit so one important takeaway from this discussion is that for a transmission line not just a transmission line any stationary apparatus if an any apparatus is stationary then its positive sequence and negative sequence will be equal whereas its uh, zero sequence its zero sequence impedance will be higher than the individual positive and negative sequence reactance it will be two to four times greater than the positive sequence or zero sequence impedances that is again when you talk about rotating electrical machines let us say for an alternator for an alternator z1 will be very very high as compared to z2 as compared to z0 that will be the relation in case of an alternator so for the fifth question i did not tell the answers the fifth question option is d and for the sixth question the option will be also d for fifth and sixth it is d and d that means in case of uh, i am talking with respect to set b next question he says that grading of cable is performed in order to achieve so option a one and two is the right answer that is to have uniform stress throughout the insulation and to reduce the quantity of insulation required so grading of cable so why do you have to grade a cable before that we will see a structure of a cable cable will have a core which is nothing but a conductor we also call it a core around the core you will have one layer of what is that insulation what is that insulation so when you are having an insulation after insulation what will be the next part next will be the sheath okay conductor insulation and sheath let us say the center of the core is here and the distance 
from center to the core is let us say r that means this is the small radius and the distance from center of the core to the border of the insulation let us say this is capital r this is the two distances now i want to find out what is the electrical potential stress in the sheath because uh, in the insulation because insulation is designed or insulation purpose is to withstand the potential stress or the voltage gradient isn't it so i'm interested to find uh, what is the voltage gradient so what is the potential stress or voltage gradient both are the same given by this formula g is equal to voltage that is nothing but the phase voltage of the core divided by x where x is the distance from the center into natural log capital r by small r this is the potential stress formula at any point on the insulation let us say i want to find what is the potential stress on the border of the conductor or i can say on the surface of the conductor or at the starting of the insulation what will be the potential stress so what will be the distance from center then it will be equal to small r so i will write this will be equal to small r so this is the value of potential stress on the surface of the conductor now i want to find out what is the final potential stress at the ending of the insulator or i can say at the surface of the sheet that will be equal to what is the distance then the distance will be equal to small uh, capital r natural log r by r isn't it r by r so from this now tell me where you will be having maximum and minimum potential stress whose denominator will be high there will be minimum value whose denominator is less that will be maximum value so you see here here you are having maximum potential stress here you will get minimum potential stress because your radius the distance from the center is more so this is one important take away from this discussion that is you will get maximum potential gradient at surface of the conductor and you will get minimum potential stress at surface of sheet so this is this problem which are facing here he is same as equalizing the potential distribution across the string string of insulators that is you find string efficiency isn't it so the same problem is over here that means the insulation which is near to the core is having maximum potential stress as you are going away from the core the potential stress on the insulation is been decreasing that means you are utilizing the insulation very poorly that means you are using more amount of insulation also for the for that what we will do is grading of cables is done grading of cables means there are two ways of grading of cable one is in grading of cables what we will use we will use different types of insulating materials in different layers let us say around core there is first layer of insulating material there are like this three layers of insulating materials let us say and uh, permittivity of layer 1 is e1 e2 and e3 three layers are there so you will use e1 whose permittivity will be more epsilon 1 will be more permittivity means it will be a best insulating material as you go out the permittivity values will be decreasing in this way what we are doing we are equalizing the potential stress because instead of using one homogeneous material we are using composite insulating material because e2 will be less means it will be able to withstand less potential stress and anyhow the potential stress is less there only so like this what we can do is we can reduce the amount of insulation used at the same time we can use we can make the stress uniform throughout the insulating material so this is called as grading of cables technique another important thing is when you will get an economical size of conductor with this concept there is another concept associated that is called as economical what is the economical size of the cable is the question you will get an economical size of the cable when you are able to when you are able to equalize the maximum potential stress potential stress equal to the minimum potential stress and this condition will be achieved when the ratio of r by r equals to e understood so this is the condition that you will achieve when you are able to max when you are able to equalize both minimum and maximum potential stress when your radius uh, or i can say this capital r to small ratio you are able to design equal to e then you will get economical size of that particular cable so there will be some problems based on this concept also next is question number 9 in uh, set b 165413 respectively other sets uh, this is a very interesting question and uh, one thing to be noted about this question is this question was given in uh, gate 2006 and 2017 both years this is a repeated question for ec branch they have taken the question from this gate paper of ec 2006 and 2007 the question says that 
he says that there is an ideal trans conductance amplifier trans conductance means he is telling voltage controlled current source so that is what he is telling over here from this i can also say this is a, such an amplifier which will convert a given voltage signal into a current signal understood if you are giving any voltage signal that will be converted into a current signal that will be converted into a current signal as simple as that that means on the input side you should have a voltage source and output side you should have a current source generally we say we say that for a voltage source the input impedance must be ideally how much the input i mean impedance of the voltage source internal impedance should be equal to zero for current source ideally the input or the or the, or the impedance of the current source should be infinite so most of the people will think option b is the right answer it looks correct many of the students have seen they have tick option b as the right answer but absolutely that is not the right answer before finding what is the right answer let us try to draw let us try to draw how the circuit looks like so i am going to explain this on a on an assumption that not we are not because because basically we are electrical engineers we are not much deep into the electronics part or the analog analog part maybe most of you have come across this question or they might have understood this question after coming out of the exam hall and while searching the key but i will tell you the way of thinking that we will be applying even though i am not an electronics guy i am an electrical i am not much having much depth knowledge about these kind of devices but still i can try to make out some of the other way so what i am going to do is on the output side he is damn sure telling that there is a current source and this current source is controlled by whom a voltage source that means on the output side you will be having a, so a dependent current source so let me draw a dependent current source there is a depend dependent current source and every dependent current source will have a resistance isn't it every dependent current source will have a parallel resistance now this current source is on the output side so this impedance or this resistance which is there is this z out parallel resistance so this is the dependent current source that means on the input side what you are sensing you are sensing voltage if you are on the input side you are sensing voltage means how do you sense voltage basically if you have a voltage source that means you should have a source of voltage to sense the voltage so let us say vs is the source of voltage if there is a voltage source voltage source will have it's a source resistance in series and your amplifier will have a resistance in series with this network so that this resistance is on the input so this is called as r in so this voltage drop across r in will be sensed and this voltage drop across r in will be controlling this current source that is the entire logic over here what will be that r in will be equal to i can say that r in is nothing but the input voltage to the actual amplifier and v in can be written as equal to vs into r in by r in plus rs isn't it that will be the input voltage equal to let us say because this is a current voltage to current converter i want to supply current to some other load this is just a practical case of a current source practical case of a current source will be having a, a diverting resistance which will be diverting all the current so we, we we actually want to send this particular current to some other sensor or some adc or any other digital or any kind of a electronic network i want to send this current let us say that current is i a load current so i want to convert maximum amount of the vs and i want to deliver maximum of the current to the load means what should be the case so when i will get maximum voltage sensed so by looking at this expression or i can say when i will get maximum voltage i will be sensing over here if my input resistance rn is much 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 higher than rs that means maximum amount of voltage will be dropped at rn only then the maximum voltage source voltage will be approximately equal to the input voltage so ideally maximum rn means rn should be how much infinite that will be equal to vn is equal to vs into if i take rn common in the denominator then i will get 1 by 1 plus rs by rn suppose if i am making r in as infinite if i am making r in as infinite this term will become zero i will get vn is equal to vs isn't it so maximum voltage will be sensed by the amplifier if i make output impedance as infinite do you think there is any diversion of current no the entire current will be flowing through the load only so for an ideal trans conductance amplifier input impedance and output impedance must be infinite which is option a in this question so the opposite type of amplifier is this is trans conductance so the next one will be 
ट्रांस इंपीडेंस और ट्रांस रेसिस्टेंस एम्पलीफायर ट्रांस इंपीडेंस और ट्रांस रेसिस्टेंस एम्पलीफायर लाइक दैट वॉज वोल्टेज टू करंट कन्वर्टर दिस विल बी करंट टू वोल्टेज कन्वर्टर करंट टू वोल्टेज कन्वर्टर दैट मीन्स ऑन द इनपुट साइड यू हैव टू सेंस वॉट यू हैव टू सेंस करंट दैट मीन्स वॉट शुड यू हैव टू सेंस करंट यू रिक्वायर शंट्स और ऑन द इनपुट साइड यू विल बी हैविंग एन इंडिपेंडेंट करंट सोर्स इंडिपेंडेंट करंट सोर्स विल बी हैविंग इट्स ओन सोर्स रेसिस्टेंस एंड दिस इज द सोर्स करंट एंड दिस विल बी द इनपुट रेसिस्टेंस ऑफ द एम्पलीफायर एंड दिस करंट विल बी कन्वर्टेड इन टू अ डिपेंडेंट वोल्टेज सोर्स इज इंड इट सो यू विल हैव अ डिपेंडेंट वोल्टेज सोर्स सो वोल्टेज सोर्स विल हैव अ विल हैव सम रेसिस्टेंस ऑफ आर आउट एंड हियर विल बी लेट अस से सम लोड रेसिस्टेंस विल बी देयर लोड रेसिस्टेंस इज देयर सो दिस विल बी द ट्रांस इंपीडेंस एम्पलीफायर now if i want to maximize my current flowing into this rn because the source current will be diverted into rs and remaining current will come to rn i want to sense maximum current means i have to divert maximum current over here if i want to convert maximum current over here what should be my input resistance equal to if i make my input resistance equal to 0 or i can say z in input impedance is equal to 0 means i will get maximum current into the amplifier next case is i want to give maximum voltage to the rl maximum voltage to the rl when i will get maximum voltage to the rl if what will be my output impedance if my output e impedance is equal to 0 total voltage will be dropped voltage will be dropped across rl so if z not or output impedance is equal to 0 then i will get maximum voltage to the load so for an ideal trans impedance or current to voltage converter z in and z out should be equal to 0 whereas for a trans conductance it should be the opposite it should be what infinite both input and output should be infinite so like this there are other two types of amplifiers what are those two types of amplifiers next amplifier is a voltage amplifier voltage amplifier means you are converting input voltage to output voltage only just you are increasing the voltage that is a voltage amplifier so i can say this is a voltage controlled voltage source so let me draw a independent voltage source on the input side so this is the independent voltage source and this is the are in and on the output side also you will be having what controlled voltage source because this input voltage is controlling the output voltage so controlled voltage source will also have its own uh, resistance r out and this will be the rl rl now tell me guys for what value of input impedance you can get maximum voltage that can be sensed by the input impedance if your z in is infinite if your z in is infinite then you can sense maximum source voltage on the input now tell me for what value of output impedance you can transfer maximum voltage to the load if your output impedance is how much should be equal to zero so for a voltage to voltage converter this should be the input and output impedance combination like this you can understand so when you talk about the gain so earlier we were talking about what current to voltage converter we were talking about voltage to current converter so when you are converting voltage to current we called it what trans conductance and this was trans impedance isn't it sir how can we remember trans conductance and trans impedance means voltage to current or current to voltage see if i want to write the gain of this kind of amplifier gain means what output quantity by input quantity so output is output voltage input is current so v by i means what it is an impedance isn't it so that means current to voltage converter is a trans impedance converter trans impedance amplifier again what is your output current by input voltage so current by voltage is admittance or i can say conductance so this is a trans conductance or trans admittance amplifier like this you can remember what is what now for a voltage amplifier what will be the gain equal to gain will be v or v not by v in that is the reason why it is simply a voltage gain amplifier or voltage amplifier like that we will try to see for current amplifier also so current amplifier means input is current output is also a current just you are amplifying the current that means current controlled current source so let me draw an ideal current source so this is a current controlled current source i can say current to current amplifier so for a current to current amplifier in order to get maximum current into the amplifier what should be the input impedance equal to input impedance is equal to zero means maximum current will be flowing here current will not divert in zs again simultaneously if you want to transfer maximum current to the load you want to transfer what maximum current output so this is the current out isn't it you want to transfer maximum current to the load means 
how should be your z out your z out should be infinite if your z out is infinite maximum current will go to the load only so here z out should be equal to infinite so that is a current control current source i can say current amplifier so like this for different cases what is the gain what should be the input current input and uh, output impedances how do you model them for circuit analysis even by using this concept you can do circuit analysis also just equal to a EC guys you can compete with EC guys also in this kind of concept so it is so easy just the thing is the way of approach the way of thinking is important next is a question number 10 it is a 26 62 38 question numbers in ACD sets it is a quite easy everybody can do this there is nothing difficulty he says that there is a node in a power system at this node in the power system there are some powers which are entering he has given two entering powers and he has given two leaving powers and what should be the power for balance so he leaving is 20 megawatt 25 megawatt and 60 megawatt and 30 megawatt are the input to this node 60 and 30 megawatt is input means total input to the node is 90 megawatt 25 plus for 20 20 plus 25 is 45 which is leaving output so for balance what should be there so you should have another 45 if you are creating another 45 load then you will have the balance of so 45 plus 45 will be equal to 90 so the KCL will be balanced so option B will be the right answer 45 leaving the node would be the answer thank you for watching